Hey guys, welcome into Fantasy Fix, our fantasy football podcast. I'm your host, Rachel Holt. I'm joined by Darren Hartwell. Darren, it's week six that we're heading into, so we're just trucking yeah. along through the season. Time flies when you're having fun. I am so defeated at this point. <laughs> I just have you're to say, I'm now. putting it out there. I'm not having any fun. I just want this fantasy football season to be over. Oh, man. I know, I know. It's That's early. what everyone keeps on telling around. me, but hey, it's not looking good at this point, and I'm not expecting it to get too much better. Well, at least uh, you took the bar low, and now there's, the only way to go is up. You know? Oh, that is the case right <laughs> now. Um, let's talk about surprises of the week. For me, yeah. Adam Vinatieri, now this is my kicker all along. I Last year, if you remember, he scored the fourth most fantasy points out of all kickers in default leagues. I mean, this is a guy who's 44, yeah. but he still has it. He has that range. This year, he ranks 17th among kickers, so not doing as well as he was last year. But hey, this past week, two field goals from beyond 50 yards. In my league, he got me 18 points, so that was the, the one bright spot for me. Um, also, A.J. Green, 189 yards and a touchdown, and the Bengals win over Buffalo for the third straight week. He got a TD, so things are looking good for those two guys. Yep. Big thumbs up. Thank you very much. I needed you. Uh, Big Ben, he's my quarterback. He finished with something like eight points in my <laughs> league. I mean, this is a guy that had five interceptions yeah. in the game, five. And he said after so the Blake loss, Bortles -esque right <laughs> very much so. He said after the loss of the Jags, maybe I don't have it anymore. So that's good <laughs> moving forward. Um, I don't know. So there was a lot of highs and lows for me. What about for you? Yeah, uh, it was it was also a low for me, uh, not too great. I ended up losing to scrambled eggs. Okay, who we've so we we talked about scrambled eggs after the first week because yeah. this is a guy in the Nesson League, uh, an anonymous person that yeah. we won't name. They auto drafted yes. the entire um, their entire roster, yeah. and they ended up drafting people like. Spencer Ware, who had already been out. Who mm -hmm. else did they Julian draft? Edelman. Julian Edelman. And mm -hmm. uh, we are making fun of them. And now this person is third in our league. Yeah, uh, he uh, served me a warm side of toast this, <laughs> uh, this week. And yeah, but the, the bad news for me is that uh, he also has uh, Leonard Fournette, who absolutely went off against the Steelers uh, in that game. Uh, and then also has Alex Smith, who's kind of been a surprise. You know, I'm not sure, 100% sure in the beginning of the season, you'd be like, why is he starting Alex Smith at quarterback? And he's been one of the best quarterbacks in fantasy over the last two weeks. So, uh, yeah, those two guys really, really put up big numbers. I actually didn't have the worst week. Uh, Deshaun Watson kind of plugged him into my lineup, and he was awesome again. Five touchdown passes, uh, nine, nine in his last two games. So that's good. Um, Aaron Jones also, another waiver wire pickup. Uh, we talked about him a little bit last week. He lived up to the hype a little bit. He had 100-plus uh, yards and a touchdown, filling in for Ty Montgomery. So th those are the two positives. LaShawn McCoy, not too happy mm. with him right now. It, it's not like he's, he's bad. He's, he's still getting a good amount of volume, and he's kind of hovering around the 8 to 10 points uh, in, in the fantasy range. But, you know, if this is LaShawn McCoy we're talking about. A guy who went, you know, sixth or seventh or somewhere mid-first round in a lot of drafts. So that production just uh, just doesn't cut it. We know what he's capable of and no. just not there yet. Yep. Um, I'm holding out hope, though, unlike, unlike you, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> yes, let's move the focus away from how we're doing in our leagues. Right. I would like to not talk about this anymore. Right. I don't like how we're starting off the show like this every week because it's, there's never any good news to report. Um, let's move on to just the biggest takeaways in general mm -hmm. from week five. So first off, what kind of surprised you this week? Yeah, uh, well, I mentioned Deshaun Watson. I think that's kind of a trend with the young quarterbacks. The young quarterbacks have been playing pretty well, especially in, in recent weeks. We talked about Watson, uh, nine touchdowns in his last two games, two 30-point fantasy efforts. Carson Wentz, another guy. Uh, a lot of the second-year QBs are, are starting to hit their stride. Carson Wentz had four touchdown passes against the Arizona Cardinals. Pretty good defense there. Um, and then Dak Prescott showed up again. Uh, 20, 20 fantasy points or more uh, in the third straight week in standard leagues. So he's, he's starting to turn things around. You know, the, the opponents are kind of saying, beat us, with, uh, beat us with Dak Prescott. We're going to load the box to stop Ezekiel Elliott. And, and Prescott's doing that. So I think that a lot of these teams are, are giving more agency to these young quarterbacks. You saw Jared Goff. Uh, his fantasy numbers aren't exactly elite level, but at least he's throwing more. So these uh, first and second year quarterbacks are getting the getting the chance to run the show a little bit. And then obviously Monday night, Mitch Trubisky, uh, Mitchell, I should say, he likes to be called. Um, <laughs> it's very polite of you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 
not too, not too much volume there, but kind of a guy to keep an eye on. He's uh, he's getting the reins in, in the Bears offense, so we'll see. Okay, well, I'll be looking for a quarterback to replace Big Ben with mm-hmm. because I'm just completely done with that guy. Yep. Um, let's talk about waiver wire ads. There were some mixed yeah. results from the people that we talked about the previous week. Yeah, you know, we can't, we can't hit on everybody, but uh, the one guy who did hit on, we discussed this, is, is Aaron Jones for the Packers. He, he got a... He got a pretty heavy workload. Uh, obviously, Todd Montgomery was out, and uh, their other rookie, Jamal Williams, didn't play either. So uh, Jones was kind of the featured back. And like I said, he, this is a guy where you just need to kind of watch him. He, he runs well. He's patient. Uh, he, he's pretty explosive. He hits the holes pretty well. Uh, and I think this is, a, this is obviously a Packers offense that's going to score a lot of points. And, you know, they, they do like to throw the ball a lot, but they rely on that run game to set up the pass. So I, I think Jones... Even when Ty Montgomery comes back, he's uh, he's a guy who could could see some t- uh, some touches, you know, maybe a little bit of timeshare, but they might just keep feeding him until uh, until you know something else happens. Uh, obviously, that's that's the positive news. On the other side, I'll. Uh, that's very I'll, noble of you to report on the negative news as I well. Know, I yeah. know. We gotta, just we calling give yourself out. I know. Here we are. Got to give all sides here. Uh, J D McKissick. I know we said he might be kind of a kind of a speculative ad uh and he he proved that uh he didn't really didn't didn't really do a whole lot for this uh for the seahawks uh you know he was he was the guy who caught two touchdown passes uh or scored two touchdowns last week uh filling in for uh chris carson but uh you know he only caught i think he caught two passes on sunday not really not really doing a whole lot so maybe a flash in the pan there yeah maybe a flash in the pan i'm still you know, I'm going to keep an eye on him. Uh, I don't think he should maybe necessarily be on your roster, but, uh, you know, you have CJ Procise there, Thomas Rawls, but uh, I would kind of just monitor the situation, but for now, not looking too good. Hey, with all these injuries, some of us are getting desperate out there, yeah. so we might need to get a guy like McKissick. Who yeah. knows? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, then one more guy I was going to mention is uh, Wayne Gallman on, on the Giants. Uh, we saw Paul Perkins go down and, uh, and, Gallman was gonna kind of be the guy that filled in, and Orleans Darkwa ended up splitting carries with him, and Darkwa got the touchdown. Gallman, 11 carries, 57 yards, pretty decent. But if you're, uh, you know, if you're trying to beat juggernauts like big scrambled points. eggs yes. over here, then, uh, <laughs> then that's, that's not gonna Ringers. do it. Yeah. We should say about scrambled eggs as much as we make fun of him <laughs> for how he auto drafted uh, MIT grad. Yeah. Um, yeah, this he's, guy he's is very guy. smart, so he's yeah, he, he knows what he's doing out there. Once again, just as a whole, I know we talked about how some of the players were unpredictable this week, mm-hmm. but the NFL, the, the teams are completely unpredictable yes. so far. Mm-hmm. There's been a number of close games, and what we're uh, anticipating in week six is kind of a return to normalcy, so a lot of people will like that. A return to the blowouts, if you will, a number of lopsided spreads in week six. Cleveland plays Houston, New England plays the Jets, Miami plays Atlanta, San Fran plays Washington, yep. the New York Giants play Denver. So if you're in a Survivor League, I was talking to my friend who's in yeah. one and spent all this money putting four teams in there out already. I mean, you're just having a lot of trouble <laughs> this year. So, hey, that's one thing to look forward to in week six. I actually think it's interesting, too, because it looks like a lot of uh, you know lopsided matchups on paper. But as we're going to get into, injuries could play a factor. Right. So obviously you have Cleveland at Houston. J.J. Watt and Whitney Merciless both out, um, you know, with Atlanta playing Miami. Uh, if Julio Jones doesn't play, that's that's a big blow for, for the Falcons. So, yeah, there's uh, – and then the, the Giants playing Denver. Um, well, I guess that works in Denver's favor because the Giants literally have zero receivers. Oh, they are so. looking horrible. <laughs> now, let's talk about those injuries. The yep. most notable one in Week 5 – Odell Beckham Jr. Now this is a fractured left ankle. Mm -hmm. It's reasonable to say that he'll miss the entire season. Maybe he'll come back late. I don't know how that works. Uh, I think that's pretty hard to rebound from. But you're not going to find a replacement for this guy. He's he's one of a kind. Mm -hmm. So things just get worse for the Giants, as we mentioned. Brandon Brandon Marshall is done for the season. Sterling Shepard could miss time after spraining his ankle in Week Five. The team is 0 and 5. And now their prospects for the year get even dimmer. It's only going to get worse for them. So should we just stay away from Giants players at this point? Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's looking pretty bleak, maybe even more bleak than our fantasy teams right, right now. <laughs> it's um, making me feel better. <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there's kind of the joke that, you know, Mario Manningham and Victor Cruz are still out there. They're free agents. Go, go reunite them. Right. 
But uh, yeah, I, I think you're going to want to stay away from Giants players. The one person worth noting, worth even mentioning, uh, Roger Lewis. You know, you're probably wondering who the heck Roger Lewis is, but he did catch a touchdown pass from Eli Manning in, the, in that week five game uh, with all those Giants players going down. He's kind of the last man standing. So just from a fantasy standpoint, you're going to want to watch if Eli Manning ends up throwing the ball 10 times uh, next game. You know, that's, that he could just be the volume guy by default, but they're going to have to go to the free agent market. They're going to have to pick someone up, uh, you know, like we do in the real real life waiver wire. Uh, but, you know, especially for, for week six, you know, they're playing the Denver Broncos at Denver. Br- the Broncos are one of the best defenses in the NFL, have really played well against the pass this year too. So, yeah, steer clear of uh, especially Eli, Eli Manning, but, you know, any, Bron- any uh, Giants skill player, I'm, I'm avoiding. Patriots fans, we know you're loving this. Mm-hmm. They're enjoying yep. <laughs> this quite a bit right now. You like and suffer. <laughs> what we're not enjoying is J.J. Watt, who has a leg fracture. Now, I think yeah. everyone, no matter what team you root for, roots for this guy. He did so much good for his community this year, yep. especially raising funds for Hurricane Harvey devastation in Houston. And uh, you hate to see good thi- bad things happen to right. good people. I-, I mean, it's a phrase. So even Patriots fans, even uh, no matter who you're rooting for, I think everyone... Uh, felt terrible for J.J. Watt for the news that he'll be out for the entire season. One of the NFL's most dominant defensive players. So no one is starting J.J. Watt, of course, but how does this trickle down and how does this affect the fantasy world? Yeah, obviously you got to have to kind of look at it from the flip side a little bit. Uh, You know, if you're playing someone who's starting uh, against Houston, that becomes a much more viable option now. Uh, Watt and Merciless, uh, obviously part of that uh, Texans pass rush, They've, they've had a pretty good pass defense uh, this season, and they've been pretty middle of the pack against the run, too. Now I think that changes, they're, especially in the, in the week coming up. They're going to be scrambling a little bit. Uh, so <laughs> they're playing the Browns, which is, uh, which is not, you know, not exactly loaded with fantasy stars. But <laughs> you know, if you look at, look at a guy like Duke Johnson, who uh, you know, can, is, a, is a runner but basically a glor- glorified wide receiver, he's going to be catching passes. Uh, so he's... His stock goes up, I think, for for this coming week. Uh, next two matchups, Seahawks and the Colts, uh, are the next two games for the for the Texans. So you're going to want to look at skill players there. Those those become better matchups. It's just uh, the nature of it. Obviously, the Texans will adjust over the course of the season. Uh, you know, because these are two season-ending injuries. But you know, when you lose a guy as dynamic as Watt, there are going to be repercussions, and you see it on the other side of the ball of fantasy. Are there any other areas where these injuries may affect the fantasy world, as far as you can tell? Yeah, I think I think that's the that's that's the biggest thing, and um, you know, I think I think the Texans can rebound from this. It, just looking at their division, um, you know, obviously we saw the Jet, the Jaguars are in first place right now, um, and <laughs> who would have thought? Know, who would have thought? <laughs> um, but you know, they've kind of been inconsistent, but. Uh, yeah, for fantasy purposes, a guy like Leonard Fournette, who's really been uh, a, a big, um, you know, one of the one of the best running backs in the NFL so far. Now, you know, he's in the division with the Texans, plays them twice, and he's gonna he might have some more room to run against against Watt. That's uh, good news for scrambled mm-hmm. eggs, unfortunately, right? Yes. He has Fournette. Okay. Uh-oh. Yes. There goes our Coming league. So uh, today we got the news that Adrian Peterson, it was announced the Saints running back, was traded to the Arizona Cardinals. Uh, He's been a huge bust so far this year. (laughs) I don't think that's overwhelmingly exciting for anyone. Only 27 carries for 81 yards in his first four games. Um, He wasn't doing much, like we said, but does this give anyone a boost? I mean, do we look at him now? Yeah, so I mean, for as far as Peterson is concerned, I would say if you're holding on to Adrian Peterson, Cut the bait. Just, just <laughs> move on. It's time to move on. This isn't 2012 anymore. My team's or, so <laughs> pathetic. I might have to pick them up. Um, I think. Well, first of all, this. So this has two impacts for the Saints. Uh, I think this does impact uh, Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara, uh, and I think it boosts both of their stocks. Uh, I think they wanted to. That's who they wanted to go with. They wanted to go with Kamara and uh, Mark Ingram. Uh, Adam Schefter actually reported that. Uh, their, their confidence in Kamara was a big reason why they were willing to trade Adrian Peterson. And they, they traded him away for a draft pick. You know, they just wanted him, wanted to move on from him. So I think you're going to see a lot more from Kamara going forward. I think if he's on the waiver wire, go up and go and get, go out and get him right now. 
Um, and then Mark Ingram, just he's going to be kind of the number one back uh, getting those carries. He's probably going to get goal line carries too because that's kind of the one thing that Peterson did, even though he didn't find the end zone. He was, he was using the red zone a lot. So those two guys, Mark Ingram and Kamara, stock up. On the other side of the, on the, other side of the ball, so to speak, uh, the situation in Arizona right now, pretty messy. The Cardinals are actually uh, one of the worst teams rushing, rushing the ball this season. Uh, they're averaging only just over like 50 yards a game, uh, which is pretty terrible. And, you know, that's an extension of David Johnson going down, you know, number one running back in fantasy. But I, I think they're, they're kind of going with a running back by committee approach and trying to figure things out. You have Chris Johnson. Chris Johnson and Adrian Peterson kind of turning, black, turning back the clock there. Um, and then Andre Ellington's involved too. I think they're just – too, too many mouths to feed and you're going to have to kind of see how it shakes out so I would avoid the, the Cardinals run game. Okay, adding to the list of things for fantasy owners to consider, not only are there players on new teams, injuries, but we're also looking at another bye week. Mm -hmm. There are four teams on byes in week six, the Buffalo Bills, the Cincinnati Bengals, the Dallas Cowboys, and the Seattle Seahawks. So Got quarterbacks that you're going to have to replace, Tyrod Taylor, Dak Prescott, Russell Wilson. Uh, running backs you're going to have to replace, sorry, LaShawn McCoy, mm -hmm. uh, Jeremy Hill, Ezekiel Elliott. Eddie Lacy, Thomas Rawls, um, you know, who stands out of that list of guys that you're really going to have to work to replace, and are there any names that come to you off the top of your head? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, Dak, Dak Prescott's a big one because he, he was kind of hot, and, you know, he was, uh, he was putting up some pretty good numbers. Um, LaShawn McCoy, again, not my favorite guy, but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but he's, uh, you know, he's, he's – uh, for, I guess for McCoy, uh, I think, and uh, uh, we'll talk about we'll talk about this a little bit later. But um, Mike Gillisley, guy who's kind of been a disappointment so far, um, he might be worth an ad in uh, in week six. Maybe he's on the waiver wire. People are kind of dropping him a little bit. The the Jets have been pretty awful against the run this year, so I think he's a guy you could you could probably scoop up. Um, wide receivers, you mentioned uh, some big names: Des Bryant, AJ Green going down. Um, I think uh, Nelson Aguilar is a is a possibility. Uh, obviously, he'd be on the he'd be on the short week because he's playing Thursday night against the the Panthers. But caught a long touchdown pass from, uh, from Carson Wentz the other day. Uh, he looks like he's he's finally stepping up in his in his third year. He's he's turning things around a little bit. Um, he's kind of a boomer bust play, but uh, I think he's uh you know he's working his way more consistently into that Eagles offense. So I think if you if you need a short term pickup, he's a good ad. You mentioned a guy, Mike Gillisley, now, mm -hmm. of course, Patriots. Yep. These Patriots players, they're giving some fantasy owners some problems so yes. far. It was a quiet week for the Patriots in week five. Now, of course, there was a short week for them. Yep. They played the Bucks. They won 19-14. Just an average day for most guys on the team. Mm -hmm. um, a bright spot for Patriots, and we've talked about this guy quite a bit, Chris Hogan. He scored again, so the number of times he was targeted has gone up every single week. Week one, it was five. Yep. Week two and three, it was six. Week four, it was nine. And this past week, he was targeted 11 times. Yep. So he's had at least one touchdown in the past four games. So if you have Chris Hogan, good on you, because he's the one consistent spot in the Patriots offense, aside from Tom Brady. Yeah, yeah, I mean, Tom Brady likes likes comfort he likes having that kind of guy that guy he goes to obviously that's been julian edelman in years past but hogan is is kind of developing developing into that guy um he's been dependable he's been, he's been the patriots most reliable receiver this season um uh, that's not great news for brandon cook's owners uh obviously we, t we talk about him uh he's been kind of the big play guy uh he did have 85 receiving yards uh, in um uh, on thursday night which is you know just a good sign but the targets the targets are still low so hogan's going to be the most dependable play of those receivers and um running backs have been yeah. entirely frustrating to say the least mm -hmm. is there any guy that you would kind of continue to start yeah, so you know we looked at the touches. If you want to look at total touches for last uh, for the last game, Mike Gillisley had twelve, Dion Lewis had nine, James White had nine. So just you know split right down the middle. But Bill Belichick and Josh McDaniels just messing with us per usual. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, as as I mentioned, um, you know if you if you need a guy, I think Gillisley is probably the guy just because the Jets have been susceptible to that you know standard run game. Um, you know, and the, if the Patriots get a lead, uh, then they might be feeding Gillisley. 
But again, you know, it's on the road, uh, kind of a tricky matchup, so I wouldn't put all your eggs in that basket. I think James White and Deion Lewis, um, White has more value in PPR. He's going to get the receptions. He had seven receptions. But, um, yeah, I, I just don't feel too good about either one of them. Uh, they both got nine touches the other day. They're, they're kind of splitting those, splitting those reps. So, uh, like we said, like we kind of predicted earlier in the season, Patriots running backs, if you're, if, you're, uh, if you're thinking about starting one, be prepared for some headaches. That's what we're getting right now. Well, the Patriots played on Thursday this past yep. week. Now moving on to this Thursday night football, Eagles versus the Panthers. By the way, I just like the Patriots playing on Sunday so much better. Can we yeah. just yeah. not do these Thursday night games anymore? No one, are, no one, none of the no players one. like them either. No, so. I know. Yeah. All right. Anyways, Eagles versus Panthers. Is Cam Newton back? <laughs> now, this is a guy that's had back-to-back 300-plus -back yard games. Yeah. So he's looking good. Yeah, and you know we, it, you know, Patriots fans got a, a first-hand glimpse, and we all thought maybe it's just the, uh, you know, the Patriots defense right. not knowing what they were doing. But uh, one interesting stat that I that I think is telling is that he's increased his uh, completion percentage in every single game so far this season. So you know he was dealing with an injury in the off season, um, dealing with some shoulder problems. So it looks like he's starting to figure it out. He's he's starting to get back in the swing of things. I'm going to need to be see a little more sample size, um, but I think if you if he's on your team if you're, he's on your roster, I think you start him uh, tonight or Thursday night. Also, the Eagles uh, not too great against the pass; uh, they've allowed the third most passing yards per game in the NFL this yeah. season. So, um, yeah, I think they're uh, he's he's a he's a good play. Um, but uh, on the other side of the ball, I think Carson Wentz. We mentioned that the, the young guys are doing well, but uh, I'm not a huge fan of this uh, this matchup for Carson Wentz on the road Thursday night. You know, playing in in Carolina, um, I think he could, at the very least, uh, he might have some struggles. And we've seen all these Thursday night games, with the exception of uh, I think it was the Rams and 49ers game, be pretty low scoring. So I'm, right. I'm kind of standing. Except away. for that one, which both teams just went off. <laughs> yeah, I know we were completely wrong. Um, well, last game, Carson Wentz, he finished with over 300 passing yards and four touchdowns. Mm -hmm. So do you think it's possibly a thing where he's feeling hot, comes into the game with a little momentum on his side? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there, you can you can make a case for that. Um, and he's he has he has some weapons at his disposal. Uh, I just think for a Thursday night game, it's it's a little bit a little bit too risky. Um, I think uh, you know they might they might rely on that running game. Go to Legarrette Blunt and see if they can turn out some yards there. But um, I think the one guy that you probably can rely on is is Zach Ertz at tight end. He's been probably one of the most dependable tight ends in the in the NFL this year. Uh, he's like we mentioned. He's uh, he's kind of Carson, Carson Wentz's security blanket. So I think he's a good start. Wentz. You can roll the dice, but uh, I would. Uh, it, you know, obviously depends on how deep your league is, but I, I would. I would err towards staying away. Okay, moving on to best defenses mm -hmm. this week. Uh, who are you looking at? <laughs> who are we trying to exploit? Oh uh, well, we are exploiting the Giants. Yep. Patriots fans. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So no the, surprise there. Yeah, the the Denver Broncos, uh, who obviously who already are one of the most you know right. talented defenses in the NFL. And now they play uh, an offense whose number one receiver is Roger Lewis, and whose number one <laughs> Who? running back is Wayne Gallman. <laughs> Orleans, Orleans Darqua. Uh, yeah, I, I don't think this is a good situation yeah. for the uh, for the Giants. They're going in Denver too, where where Denver plays a lot better. Okay. Any other teams we're picking on? This yeah, is the fun part. We I just know. get to pick on other teams. <laughs> uh, I also like the Redskins this this week. They're coming off a bye and they are playing the 49ers, who uh, another team kind of limited on on um, offensive weapons. Uh, the Redskins have, have made some plays on defense, and you know they they held their own against the Chiefs uh, a few weeks ago, uh, despite the loss. So I think I think they're a good ad. Okay, well, we've had this um, theory yes. that you can be successful if you pick on any team mm -hmm. that's playing the Jets and the Browns. Last week, we added the Patriots, unfortunately, to that list because their defense has just not looked good. Yeah. Um, now this week, kind of interesting, the Patriots play the Jets. So two yeah. people on those list, on that list. I mean, is it <laughs> safe to say that we can start the Patriots' defense, given all the issues that they've had, but they're playing the Jets? So I, know. I don't know. It's, uh, it, it's you know messes with your mind I know. a little bit. That's um, one for scrambled <laughs> eggs to, to ponder yeah, for my us. Mine feels like scrambled <laughs> eggs. Um, I think uh, I think you can start them. 
I'm gonna I'm gonna go out on a limb and say you can't start them. We saw we saw a little bit of uh, positive momentum the other week in the, against the Bucks. They they didn't look as there were there were obviously a few communication issues, but they gave up uh, under 20 points, which is a, a big step forward. And then um, these divisional games, Patriots Jets, they they seem to kind of be like low scoring affairs. A lot of a lot of crazy things happen. So uh, I'd I'd roll out the I'd roll out the Patriots. Obviously, if you have better better options, go for it. But if you need like a waiver wire ad, they're probably available because they've gotten. I would smoked. assume so. Um, so yeah, give them a shot. Okay, being brave. Yeah, that's that's what we're all about here. Okay, well, Patriots fans Make will like bold, to hear that uh, one. Bold moves. Bold moves. You mm-hmm. always give us your bold prediction for yes. week six. So this year, or this week rather, yeah. uh, what are we looking at? All right. Uh, I'm going to try to actually get one right this time. Um, <laughs> What's I'm going... your record on bold <laughs> predictions, by the way, before anyone listens to you? Uh, we'll call it call it 500. <laughs> That's not That's bad. 500. Mm. No, uh, I think last week I had Jameis Winston uh, torching the Patriots defense. Did not happen. Although I did hedge my bets because that means the Patriots did well. So right. yeah, smart yeah. decision. You're by a me. smart guy. Yeah. Uh, my bold prediction this week: uh, I like Alvin Kamara. He's going to have 100 rushing yards, uh, and then he's also going to get uh, 50 yards receiving. Uh, and he's going to uh, he's going to have a big game against the Detroit Lions, despite the, the tough defense. I think they're the Saints trans- tra- Saints offense transitioning. The life without Adrian Peterson, and that means a heavy dose of Mark Ingram and Alvin Kamara. So, good we go. stuff. Well, uh, Darren, we will be at Patriots practice mm-hmm. Wednesday, Thursday this week. So, as always, keep it on Nesson.com for all your Patriots coverage, and we'll be covering the game um, as they take on the Jets. So, yeah. I know everyone will be tuning into that one. We love it when they play the Jets, don't we? Yeah, <laughs> get back in the division, you know, get some excitement going. Yes. First place battle. I know. Yeah. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? <laughs> AFC um, East on the line. And as always, make sure you keep it on Nesson.com for all your fantasy football news.